हेलो एवरीबॉडी एंड नाउ वी आर लाइव करेंटली एंड वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस टुडेज टॉपिक इफ यू आर हियर एंड यू आर एबल टू सी मी जस्ट टाइप येस इन द कमेंट बॉक्स इफ यू आर एबल टू सी मी क्लियरली एंड लिसन टू माय वॉइस प्रॉपरली या सो जस्ट टाइप येस इन द कमेंट बॉक्स एंड जस्ट पुट अ थम्स अप सो दैट आई नो दैट यू आर एबल टू सी मी एंड लिसन टू मी superb so today's session as i mentioned you know it's going to be uh, amazing session in terms of uh, understanding some of the monopolies in the indian context and we are also going to learn about some of the prominent market leaders and the idea is again not uh, to just give fight and businesses and tell you that this is what you should be doing right the idea is that uh, you will get the context you know how to identify such businesses what are the traits of such business businesses and uh, that is how we will go deeper in terms of identifying that blueprint that what makes uh, such businesses how those kind of monopoly gets created yeah so that is the whole idea of this session and of course we'll have uh, 10 businesses which we'll dissect together and learn about it what does it mean how these are created and all those aspects we'll also cover okay so if you are ready for this just type ready in the comment box take lot of notes right so if you have note and uh, pen ready just type ready in the comment box yeah so let's get started with this note and uh, we'll go one by one dissect the businesses and let me also see who all are here we have shobit tulsian here they yeah, are fully ready and you can just accept uh, you know the comments so that i can see the names also just in case you are not accepted it yeah so let's get started with uh, amazing principles and uh, learning about platform businesses monopoly businesses and some of the market leaders in indian context yeah so let's get started with that note i'll share my presentation and once that is visible let me know uh, that it is visible okay i am just uh, now going into the presentation mode here and let me know once that is visible okay yeah so is it uh, clear for all of you uh, just type clear if it is visible yeah so let's get started with uh, first the mindset and what does it take to become a monopoly business or uh, you know these kind of great market leaders in the indian context right that is the first thing we will get started with so going into the context this is like the compounding equation and i keep turning this uh, again and again many times this is what uh, the compounding looks like for a company yeah so final amount is equal to invested amount into 1 plus return raised to time and this applies in many many different ways in our life and uh, in our different aspects of investing as well so here now if you think about the final amount is basically the compounding which we are doing of course uh, in terms of how the earnings are growing within the company and then the second aspect is what is the length right how much time this compounding is happening okay uh somebody is saying you are not able to see my live video is it the case with other people also is uh, the screen not visible for all of you guys okay let me do something else let me let me just uh, use another screen let me just do some crazy stuff okay and uh, let me now uh, do this okay is it better guys is now uh, is it visible okay superb so i think now for most people it is uh, visible and hope uh, you are able to see the slides also can you confirm if you are able to see the slides i am just trying a new platform but now i think uh, it should be clear yeah superb so this is like equation of compounding okay within the company also it works same in the in your life also it works same whatever you keep learning it will compound and same happens with the companies so how does company compound its earning so the companies compound their earnings by you know doing business in a profitable way and what is that profitable way 
So suppose you have uh, got money at 8%, you know, you're borrowed from bank. And if you are able to generate 10% return on that, what does that mean? You have done some profit on the amount you had borrowed, right? So same way, you know, company has a concept of cost of capital, which we generally, you know, say as return on equity or cost of equity. And then whatever return it generates, the return on equity, that is what we see, you know, whether that 8% versus that 8%, they've made that 10, 15, 20% what they have done, right? So that is the whole idea here. And second is how long it can compound, right? So for one, it, it needs to make that product and uh, grow from selling those, those products in a profitable way. And then it needs to keep on doing continuously. Right, everybody with me so far just type with you in the comment box yeah so that is how the compounding engine works so you have a cost of capital and if you are able to generate above your cost of capital you compound and then you keep growing for a long period of time and uh, that is how you go on yeah so that is the compounding equation which uh, which is a very very powerful concept then the second aspect comes is how these companies are able to compound for a long period of time Right. That is a very, very big uh, concept. Now, this is what, uh, you know, the book Common Stock, Uncommon Profits, this guy Philip Fisher mentions that these high profit margins, because if you are earning slightly more than the cost of capital and probably you are also earning high profit margins. And when we talk about today's topic, monopolies and market leaders, most of them operate at high profit margins or high returns on capital if it, if at all it's like a demart kind of business if the margins are low still you know they are able to churn that volume and they are able to generate that high return of on capital employed right which is called uh, called as roc so why does that happen and what is the impact of that so it's like this you know there is one pani puri wala and he is able to earn so much returns what will happen tomorrow other pani puri wala will see and say that you know this guy is earning too much let me you know kill his competition yeah so let me kill his competition and he will do all sort of stuff so that uh, you know this guy is able to squash right so you basically compete that person so that uh, uh, he's not able to earn so much, right? There will be competition. So that is exactly what Philip Fisher says, you know, that high profit margins may be compared to open jar of honey, right? Open jar of honey is basically, you know that there is so much of honey out there. And what will happen is all those hungry insects will uh, attack that honey jar. And that is nothing but competition, which we just discussed. How do you protect from this competition and become a monopoly or a market leader in your space? The answer is again here, you know, one way is to become a monopoly, which is generally illegal if you do it in a wrong way. But the other way to do it is you become so efficient that there is no incentive for any other player in the market to enter your jar, right? And that is what Charlie Munger and all those guys have been talking about the concept of moats. How many of you have heard this term before, moats? Just type me in the comment box if you have heard this term. So the moats are nothing but it's called competitive advantages. So in, your, in the picture you see it's, it's similar to that. There is a castle in between and there is, there is this water outside and you have a lot of crocodiles and a lot of dangerous, uh, you know, animals inside that you know reptiles or animals whatever you call it yeah so that is how the fort is protected from the outside attack and in in terms of companies and in terms of business model when we think about how do a company protect itself from the competition that is the same analogy of this fort which is protected by this uh, water and then it has long uh, you know high walls and nobody can climb it so in terms of companies, these are the six different things and there are still more things, but these are six prominent ones. How you can build that moat or a competitive advantage around your business. So the first one is strong brand. If you have like really, really strong brand, people will ask for your brand. They will not go to your competition. Can you name some of these kind of brands which you know or you have always, you know, consumed? 
give me some names so that i know you are getting this concept yeah just give me some names which uh, you have heard about the brands which are prominent one yeah any idea which brands you might have seen again in your day to day life also so don't think too much you can uh, just quote some of the examples from your own life okay you can uh, yeah maggi nestle for infants dalda okay asian paints superb what else what else have you uh, noticed colgate tata salt yeah these are very very good brands you know even if uh, you want something else you will still ask for uh, colgate yeah although they might give you different things yeah ix amul yes maruti superb what what are other brands yeah facebook is a brand okay <laughs> amazing good stuff loving it super so you got the idea right so brands are very very prominent way in which customer relates to that product and once they are accustomed to that brand they will they are unlikely to switch to something else yeah so that is that is very very important uh, concept now let's come to the second point yeah where you have high switching cost so if it is like too painful for you to switch between the systems you know so when i switch from windows to mac it was like really painful for me you know a lot of softwares it was not working some of these software like which i am doing right now it was not available in windows i am still experimenting it right now in front of you so a lot of these things are uh, matter right because it, it it's a painful process when you need to switch from one platform to another so if you can bring that stickiness into your business that is very powerful third is network effects yeah network effects is what we experience in facebook and youtube you know so when there is so much of uh, content out there in youtube because there are so many producers and so many consumers there is no incentive for a user to go in on some some other platform or for a creator to go on some other platform yeah with me so far so basically if you have a big customer base which is propelling that connection between buyer and seller and that also is known as platform businesses where these network effects are really really powerful okay so that is where uh, you need to understand how powerful it can get so that is called platform businesses also and these generate a very powerful network effects okay so that is very very key concept again to learn fourth one is the low cost advantage if you are somebody who is so efficient so efficient that you are able to produce something at a very very low cost yeah then you can beat competition imagine that same example of pani puri wala if other competition is having a cost of production of 10 rupees and this pani puri wala is selling whole plate for 10 rupees what will happen no other player will come on and even if they come they will bleed and other customer will still prefer that cheaper option because they are getting value for their money fifth one is economies of scale very powerful again so if you are able to scale up very fast and uh, because of that scale you are able to achieve all these low cost advantage switching cost you are able to build brand then you again become very powerful and it it might not be just one thing it could be also combination of multiple things which could be playing out yeah so that is the fifth concept when you understand uh, these kind of competitive advantages of or modes and sixth is patents and ips where you are protected by law and nobody else can enter your space just because uh, you have got that patent you have got that ip okay now what are the traits of some of these businesses just let me know if you have observed these businesses what are some of the competitive advantages that translate into some of the financial metric what are those financial metric that that you might have observed in these businesses just a name few and we'll understand yeah one yes of course uh, high margins right if you are really really efficient your margins will slightly be on a higher side you might be having a brand where you can command slightly higher pricing so that translates into better operating margins lot of time better uh, net profit margins also what else what else do you see 
high roc yes higher return on capital employed that is another trait most of the times they also have something called bargaining power and purchasing power right so when they acquire material from their suppliers they will have a better pricing power better bargaining power and same way you know when they are selling to the customers they will have a better pricing power so because of that their working capital cycle will also be efficient yeah so they they might you know ask for advance when they are selling to customer and when they are paying to their suppliers they might delay the payment and still supplier cannot say anything yeah so that could be the trait when it comes to the pricing power and uh, when the strong business is able to command that uh, you know entire supply chain yeah so that is what is another uh, very powerful concept okay so hopefully you are with me so far right so if you are with you so far now what we are going to do is we are going to go deeper into this now you got the building blocks right and this is what again uh, charlie munger says what it translate in terms of our investing returns right so if you keep on doing this again and again if you are uh, partnering a high growth business with a high roc and you have that long runway over a period of time even if you pay slightly expensive looking valuation you'll get a lot of results yeah so that is what is the end result and as an investor why it is important yeah hope you all got this point so first it is very important to have those strong businesses where the competition is not coming through that is the first point which we discussed the second point is uh, to understand how it can be done right so the how the answer was that we avoid competition by having some competitive advantages and what are those competitive advantages we understood all those competitive advantages and then what is the implication that is what we are learning now right so what it implies in terms of investing is better returns because you are able to have a compounding machine which can compound earnings for a long period of time without any competition or very very minimal competition and even if that competition is coming you still generate superior return you still generate a better a uh, working capital cycle and still you are better off in terms of earnings uh, compounding yeah so that is the whole uh, magic which we are uh, understanding here so now what we'll do is we'll go one by one into some of these businesses which are either monopolies or they are leader in their segment you know so uh, the idea is to again understand the traits they might not be like technically pure monopoly where there is only one business in that space but they might be commanding a big market share in that uh, particular space and even if they have competition it might be very tiny or it might be very small players who are in unorganized space or they have very small market sh uh, share right so that is the definition of monopoly which which we will relate today it might not be like pure pure kind of monopoly which uh, on the dictionary sense yeah but still knowing these traits of these businesses and uh, understanding how it performs that will give you a very good perspective yeah so if you are ready for this just type ready in the comment box and let's start with the first business yeah so the first business here is irctc okay irctc will be very known brand for most of you so what does irctc do they are into three spaces majorly so one segment is catering service okay one is catering service where you get food and you know they have tie up with lot of other vendors and even if you are sitting at your uh, railway seat you get uh, that uh, food at your place second is uh, railway ticketing right how many of you still remember booking tatkal tickets in the morning i'm sure a lot of you might have migrated in the flights uh, and become a airline customer but you might still remember those days 8 o'clock or 8:30 i don't remember exact time but we used to log in and a uh, lot of people even used to sit uh, and or stand on the queues near the railway platforms right how many of you remember this just type yes in the comment box so that is a uh, second segment of uh, operations where irctc operate the third is packaging drinking water uh, what that rail near and all those irctc brands you see that is uh, you know the irctc product and they are again market leader so 45% of market share of drinking water distribution on railways is being commanded by irctc and it is the only authorized railway ticket uh, online railway ticket uh, platform player yeah so it is more like a digital play and uh, it it commands monopoly by the virtue of the government mandate itself right so railway is authorized only irctc 
to book book online railway tickets and then it has also catering service where it gets large portion of revenue now it has also ventured into private trains right there are few trains which are private trains which are operated by IRCTC and this is like a debt free company again excellent return ratio so this is again the pattern you will see in most of these businesses that because they generate lot of free cash flows because they are highly profitable and uh, generally they don't need too much of outside capital through debt and even if they do in the initial year they generally repay those debt because they are high free cash flow generating companies yeah so that is the trait you should remember most of these companies will be debt free if they are generating good return ratios and still able to compound at a decent rate yeah so that is the first business uh, in terms of uh, understanding the second is info edge how many of you have used this platform at least once and if you don't know info edge it is nokri right nokri.com so if you have uploaded your cv at least once on your on this platform just type me in the comment box yeah if you have done that any time in your life and i'm sure uh, you will relate to this uh, business so yeah i am getting comments from a lot of you so that is the whole thing you know so it is a market leader in the online job portal space and then what it has done consciously is because you don't need capital here right it's a just a website nokri website you need minimal capital there you need a bunch of staff uh, your customer care and all that so it generates lot of capital which it doesn't need to deploy it is just like a system so what they consciously did is they started reinvesting that money into their own businesses and uh, they started acquiring different different uh, online portals so now they are more like a vc player they invest in more of these tech startups and then grow it and then their idea is to make them bigger and then you can ipo also so zomato is a classic example so zomato they it's a in house tech company within that entire nokri space and now they are basically taking it public they have already i think filed the prospectus also and zomato will be another listed business same way they have uh, companies within uh, this business like 99 acres jeevan sathi and lot of other such small small companies where they take small stakes like 20% 30% 50% stake and then they help them grow so it has 75% online job market uh, job portal market share can you believe it 75% of market share on the online job portal then there are very small small other players but this is like the major one so it's a market leader and almost a monopoly it has 55% market share on online real estate uh, space yeah so 99 acres again command like 55% of market share so that is how you know one it is a platform business because it's more tech digital platform where it connects buyers and sellers and uh, second is uh, it has that monopoly in place it has that economies of scale because of which no other people can enter another thing it has is network effects right because if lot of companies are there on their platform lot of job seekers will also connect with them getting me so that is what network effects which we learned earlier it perfectly ties back over here also same with zomato you know if you have lot of restaurants on the platform lot of users will want to ask the food from zomato rather than going to any other place and you might have lot of reviews and all those things also in place yeah that is how these companies become really really powerful yeah if you found this concept powerful the combination of economies of scale network effects and if you are now able to relate with this just type powerful in the comment box yeah so that is the whole idea the companies are more like example these are not even recommendations but the idea is for you to connect the dots and understand how this forms a big picture yeah so that is uh, on the second front yeah second business which we learned now let's go to the third business which is the third business at speedlight how many of you have used this right give me fevicol bhaiya nobody ask for give me adhesive it has like become a synonym of the underlying product itself like we don't ask for noodles we ask for maggi same way you know pirilight has created this strong brand visibility again brand which i mentioned first competitive advantages that is what uh, we are seeing here it has created a such a powerful brand that now nobody asks for adhesive they ask for fevicol or feviquick and uh, that is what people understand even if you give something else still they will know that this is fevicol 
yeah so that is the power of brand and over many years they have been doing this so like entire generation they ask with this and this is the classic example of a company which buys commodity and then sells brand what do i mean by that if you think about adhesive or tata salt it's all commodity right and the, at the end of the day it is not a like very big thing adhesive is adhesive it is not like a rocket science to make an adhesive it is not a rocket science to make salt right it is not a rocket science to make a toothpaste so these are like commodity which are very very cheap and they sell it as a brand they don't sell it as a commodity and that is how they are able to command a very high premium and a big margin so go through some of the tools and you'll understand you know what are the kind of margins they are commanding you can go to screener.in or uh, any other you know place where you get financials you will be amazed by the kind of margins they generate the kind of uh, you know pricing power they have okay another thing uh, they command is also strong distribution network and that is again one more more of a competitive advantage more it is now eroding because you have online space in certain businesses but that is again a very powerful thing so popular brands of uh, pedilite fevicol dr fixit mcl again you might have asked you know give me mcl to seal that you know tap and all that but nobody will know what exactly it is right nobody will say that adhesive for pipe fitting and all that you know they will just ask for mcl and dr fixit again was a brand they acquired and made it big and this is again one more strategy what pedilite does you know they acquire small small brands which uh, trade as a commodity so they get them cheaper acquire them and then make that as a big brand so dr fixit is now a big brand but they actually acquired it it, it was not a in house brand and in terms of statistics 70% of adhesive market fevicol market again they are commanding and they are continuously taking away market share from an organized play yeah how many of you did not know this just type dn didn't know in the comment box yeah dn in the comment box so that i know that you uh, are finding it interesting and all these trivia you know i got from different website one of the website is tijori finance where you know you can source this and uh, i've got a lot of these data points they again give the so underlying source also yeah so that is uh, again what i got through now fourth one any guesses what is the fourth one it's like very similar to pedilite you might have heard that name any guesses for the fourth business fourth business yeah as lot of you are saying is asian paints that's right yeah so asian paints is again one of the well known name in the paints industry market leader in the paints industry with a 60% market share okay 60% market share in decorative paints and uh, they are again you know taking up a market share of unorganized players so there is like uh, remaining 20 30% i think un unorganized uh, market share which they are continuously taking and that is the reason it is able to compound over a long period of time and still it is growing at a very healthy rate again debt free company very strong distribution network and very well organized in terms of technology so they do their supply chain management and inventory management through high tech technologies yeah so that is how they are able to gain that uh, market share and constantly improve it the major strength is distribution network and then they do lot of innovation you know they did a innovation in terms of customized paints and a uh, lot of other stuff yeah now again you know the trades you will see is debt free status they reinvest majority of the portion of their cash flow that is again a uh, trade and they keep on penetrating in uh, tier 2 tier 3 and even smaller towns and lot of these towns in india you might know that these are still you know kacha uh, kind of uh, structures right so there is still long long runway to go and if they continuously command this market share and if they are able to uh, run this process again and again there is a long long runway so far as this company is con concerned right again you do your own analysis and that is what i'll also share you a template if you don't have that uh, template uh, i'll share you a template where you can do all these study see the past historical growth rate you can also you know see their margin trajectory and all that so i'll be sharing that template anytime uh, during this presentation so stay tuned 
and uh, if you have not yet liked this uh, session you can just like it and even if you watch in future in youtube you can also subscribe to my youtube channel yeah so now let's come to the next business next business after asian paints is this okay it's aisha motors the bullet bike company that is what i call it yeah so the royal enfield bullet bike company is nothing but aisha motors initially it was majorly into uh, truck segment then they did partnership with volvo in i think around 2008 and uh, then uh, this guy called siddharth lal whom, whom i called intelligent fanatic because he is like very very passionate about uh, his space biking and whatever he does very passionate person i have also heard him in the agm couple of years back and is mind blowing okay that is the word i can tell about him uh so he you know took this royal enfield bullet bike which was there earlier into a new avatar royal enfield 350 cc and all those segments and currently as we speak you know it is commanding 96% market share in the mid market segment of this bikes 250 cc to 750 cc bike yeah and it has created huge wealth for its investors and in 2009 10 it was growing like 60 70% every year right if you found this crazy just type crazy in the comment box yeah it's not easy for this segment because it's very very small niche it's not a mass market kind of biking segment but still you know that is the magic what siddharth did and created huge wealth for the shareholders now they are what they are doing right now is they are aiming to become a usd 5 billion global company yeah so that will make india proud also in the global space and they are also focusing on getting more wallet share through accessories you know so when you ride a bike you need those gloves you need that jacket and all those things they are also focusing so that uh, they can gain more wallet share they can do more of branding and they have done recently lot more uh, launches also so they have launched himalayan couple of months back then they uh, went into 650 cc twin engine segment also and recently they also launched meteor brand and all of these are like pretty successful in the market although they have got one competition recently java bikes but let's see how it goes right uh, so that is the whole thing you know these uh, monopolies might be challenged with new incumbent and how they fight it out how they again take away that market share or how they kill competition is like really interesting to see and that is what i am keenly tracking in this space also how they are able to you know capture their uh, entire uh, space again and uh, grow in their business now one question i want to ask before we move to the next business is it is it good enough to just have that leading position and become a monopoly is it just good enough yeah somebody saying uh, i think fl is child in this category yeah i think that is also promising it is more like a platform business again but let's see how it goes it, and there are so many such companies i'm just again as i said i'm giving you example so that you can hunt for that next uh asian paints or pedilite or aisha motors and ride that for future and make wealth right that is the whole idea and i'll i'll share some of those emerging businesses also after this but uh, let me ask you this is being a market leader and having that monopoly position sufficient to create wealth or grow in future just type yes or no in the comment box is it sufficient you know you are monopoly you are king of your area okay will that create future wealth yeah as a lot of you are answering it's no because uh you need to first have that space which is growing if you are like capturing 96% of you know this bullet bike and no more people are buying those bikes what will happen your growth will get stagnated right and then uh, another thing is disruption right if you are king of that space but that space itself is getting disrupted and something else is coming in that space the new economy companies you know that yellow pages book which used to come right that, that book where you used to get all the phone numbers and addresses of lot of companies how many of you remember that yeah long time back if you are like millennial like 20 in 20s you might not have even seen that but that is what was happening you know if you want to find out name of certain person or phone number or their address or a shop address you need you used to have that yellow book 
directory in a paper format and everybody every year used to order that because it used to get updated and it was like monopoly business with the internet everything gone yeah so that is how disruption plays the part so one you need to be in a emerging space uh, when you think about market leaders and uh, monopolies second you need to think about the pond or the market itself whether it is growing or not because if you are capturing already a big part of that market how will you grow if the market is not growing right you have already taken market share and you already saturated that market so that is where i give this analogy okay of a small fish in a big pond and a big fish in that same pond yeah so if you are a big fish you need that pond to grow otherwise there is no point yeah and i see a lot of people falling into that value trap they will see all these traits but they will not understand whether this business will be able to grow or not yeah so that is very very important when it comes to uh, investing that your pond should be growing or else you should be a small fish in a very big pond and you should know that there will not be any new fish that will be jumping as i said in other examples also you know that aisha java bike is coming so if you if you have attack from your competition then you might need to be careful so either if you are a big fish in a pond you need a growing pond otherwise you need that uh, small fish in a big pond and even better if that pond is also growing right if the if the pond of a small fish is also growing and if it in command the monopoly position you have like hit the jackpot <laughs> okay so that is what uh, is very important and next slides you will also understand and connect all these things so next business sixth business is indian energy exchange this is like one of the prominent exchange market leading position in indian energy market space so what we get in our home the electricity which we get we get from discoms the distributor of uh, electricity state distributors or it could be private distributors at times but uh, it is a highly regulated market but if you want to buy power right then there is a marketplace and there is this one prominent exchange which is called indian energy exchange and it commands 97% of electricity and energy trading market share yeah so apart from what we get directly uh, this is what it commands yeah everybody with me so far just type with you in the comment box and uh, now it is also venturing into gas exchange yeah so now it is also expanding its competitive advantage modes and it has tied up with very prominent players i think gale and uh, adani uh, total gas and lot of prominent players have uh, taken the stakes in the gas exchange and it is like uh, going into new space altogether it also trades renewable energy certificates and energy saving certificates you know so these are like uh, certificates which you can also trade on the exchange and it is like a very new blue ocean space where you have very competition as such yeah so that is uh, the beauty about this yeah recently it has also got a competition from bse they are just getting started so that is again another aspect which i told you right that competition will try to come and beat that space let's see how it goes uh, so it is bse they have collaborated with uh, certain other players and they are trying to start it let's see how it goes but there is regulation if that like in couple of years if they are not able to gain significant market share they have to merge or close it down yeah so there is huge chance that if they are not able to grow they will uh, probably merge with uh, with iex also in future right that is the whole idea now seventh is india mart india's uh, largest online b2b marketplace connecting buyers with suppliers so this is what has taken over the yellow pages which i was mentioning right so this is more like a classified where b2b customers can connect with each other and it commands 60% online b2b classic classified market space and india is land of you know smes so they have like 125 million plus buyers which is like approximately 12 crores 6.5 million plus suppliers and 72 million products and services which are you know listed on this space and they have more like annuity annuity based model recurring fees subscription based model and also they have uh, you know some initial uh, listing fees also yeah so that is how india mart earns its money how many of you know about india mart or you have heard about india mart just type 
yes in the comment box yeah so now what is also happening is same thing you know like iex and uh, java bikes in this space also just dial is entering as a competition so that is the emerging competition which uh, we are seeing in this space and again it's a very nascent stage let's see how it goes but it will be again interesting to see yeah next is nestle india yeah very very powerful brand again very big uh, portfolio of companies market leader in milk and nutrition uh, beverages cooking aids chocolate confectionery things lot of things and they have uh, brands like lacto grow serelec which is now known as a uh, sere grow nescafe maggi milky <laughs> milky bar milo kitkat bar one milk milkmaid nesty so many powerful brands you know and uh, you know lot of times these are again synonymous you know lot of people will ask that give me maggi they will not say that give me noodles okay so they command 96% of infant cereal market share yeah very very powerful brand and uh, if you are a parent you don't want to compromise with the quality of your ba baby's food right that is very very clear so that is why uh, they get prominence and uh, you know they command this market share now if you are not following me on twitter you can by the way follow me on this handle i've just popped up the handle mashrani vivek and after this what i'll also do is if you want to download this template which i mentioned you i'll share that link also so you can go to this and actually download the excel link it's technofunda.co/excel and uh, you can download this uh, excel link yeah there you can do lot of company analysis there are all the steps which are out there and this is just like a token of gesture for all of you who are there live you can just uh, use this and download it yeah so just note this down i'll just flash it once more technofunda.co/excel okay so now let's go to the next business which is uh, very important to understand after nestle and again they command nestle commands like 69% of uh, instant pasta which is the market but which we understand as maggi right so it it commands 69% of market share and the trivia about it is uh, even when maggi was banned for almost a year still people did not switch and those who switched to other brands they again came back to Mag maggi right how many of you are maggi lovers out here just type love it in the comment box yeah i prefer that brand although they have different variant atta maggi and all that which i prefer but that is like household name right yeah so if you love it just put a love symbol or just put a thumbs up uh, so that we know it yeah next is a uh, container corporation of india and this is like a slightly hidden kind of business not many of you might have heard about it but what does it do it uh, basically those containers you might have see, seen right those containers are basically uh, having depots where they need to you know put it and stored right so container corporation of india is market leader in that space it has a network of 60 inland container depots and it is like virtually monopoly only thing is because it is government backed and majority of the uh, shareholding is of government it's not that efficiently run and if you see the return rate ratios and all that it is not so promising but it has that monopoly structure because it is government regulated and you need license to do all those things now they are also expanding into ports and air card go complexes and they are also establishing some cold chain again debt free company but as i mentioned the return ratios are slightly not in line you need to study it properly and you need to Uh, you know get convinced with it if you want to invest but it commands like 64% of rail cargo domestic market share so whatever rail cargo goes 64% of market share is commanded by their container operations yeah so very powerful business uh, in terms of uh, this and yes uh, it is also going for divestment there are a lot of talks and that's why you know it has run up a bit uh, so if they are really able to diversify and able to you know do that i think it should be really promising now last but not the least is uh, gas distribution businesses now these are individual businesses but they command monopoly or market leadership in their own spaces so if you think about igl indraprastha gas right that is uh, basically 
commanding market share in that uh, you know ncr region if you think about mgl mahanagar gas it is having a market leadership in the bombay and you know surrounding area if you think about ggl gujarat gas limited you know it is commanding a market leadership into the gujarat uh, uh, as a as a whole right so that is where they have strength in terms of distribution network and they command their market leadership operates across different things you know commercial png connections domestic png connections cng connections and it's again a uh, debt free companies with uh, company with excellent return ratios and if you see their margins they are more than 20% operating margin companies most of it they are so very powerful uh, businesses and uh, virtual monopoly in their spaces a lot of capex they keep on doing and uh, they have a lot of exclusivity rights and all that yeah gale is again a separate business it's uh, it's a slightly different business but again it's a monopoly in fact igl is a, a partnership between gale and i think one more uh, such entity i don't remember it right now but uh, that is what is a slightly difference here right so hope you got the clarity here and uh, what we do in our community like uh, the community which i have techno fund investing community we kind of uh, do a hackathon where we do lot of these things where we discuss lot of these uh, businesses dissect it and uh, we also do lot of uh, free webinars so it is uh, on compounding and learning about all the processes i also blend technical analysis with uh, understanding of all these businesses so if you are not yet part of my community you can even join my live session so you can just uh, store this link technofunda.co/live and we can meet live again and uh, discuss lot of different things on compounding hope you enjoyed this session right so if you enjoyed this session just type uh enjoyed in the comment box yeah just type enjoyed in the comment box and uh, i'll also post this on youtube so you can uh, any any day watch this in future in my youtube channel uh the youtube link for uh, my channel is vivek mashrani right so you can just type vivek mashrani in youtube and you can subscribe and you can like this video once i upload this so hope uh, you got a lot of clarity you enjoyed and it was worth your time right so really appreciate your time again thank you for uh, joining this lovely session keep learning and uh, stay safe stay positive i am vivek mashrani uh, signing off for today